Coming in July 2024, a new book by Jim Myers. Alone with Bigfoot, a collection of stories and reflections. Ten years in the making. Pre-orders will be available in June 2024. This book will feature IBT, Hangar One Publishing's exclusive immersive book technology, where you can see and hear the author's video and audio that he has captured during his many adventures. Please visit HangarOnePublishing.com for more info on all their amazing books. Welcome, everyone. You are at the Sasquatch Outpost podcast. I'm your host, Jim Myers, and we've got a great show for you tonight. Looking forward to our guests, and it's going to be lots of stories, lots of uh, laughter, I hope. These guys are both um, wonderful, wonderful guys with a great sense of humor. So a couple of quick things here. The reason I'm wearing this and not my customary cowboy hat is I am celebrating the fact that Auburn basketball won the SEC tournament. So we are the SEC basketball champions, and we're now moving into the uh, March Madness tournaments, and we're going to win the national championship. You got my word on that. So that's what the hat's for tonight, just in honor of my team. Um the last, the last podcast, uh, I talked about the snowstorm that was coming in, and uh, the it did come in, and it dumped, it dumped a lot, and uh, I think in Bailey we got twenty five to thirty inches, and in Conifer they got about forty inches. So uh, I did this <laughs> this video. I went down to my store the day after the storm, kind of to see where things stood and how much we were going to have to dig out. And uh, this is, I'll put this up here and show you what happened. Well, I've been cleaning my driveway off, plowed it three times with my ATV. Uh, Came down to the store and see this. So uh, I was just trying to help a friend get her vehicle out and I drove up her driveway, forgot that her driveway is at an angle heading towards the hill. My truck started sliding towards the hill. So my truck's up at her house. I'm waiting for her to get back, picking her husband up at the airport. Had to dig her truck out first. So this has been uh, an adventure uh, of three feet of snow, just about. <laughs> Love living in Colorado. Yes, I do. And we need this snow as much as it's a pain sometimes. We need big snows like this that will sit on the ground, soak in real slow like this one's going to do. So it, it just it, it adds moisture to everything and reduces our fire risk a great deal. So, um, uh, We've had people, I have friends who couldn't get to their houses uh, for three days because they went somewhere else where 
they knew they could get in and out. And there are people who had didn't get out of their houses for three days or more. If I was still plowing commercially like I used to, <laughs> we'd have been plowing for four days straight. It would have been incredible. And undoubtedly, one of our trucks would have broken down or both of them. So uh, it's a madhouse when it snows like this. So finally got my truck out, thankfully, and uh, um, it was stuck up there all day. But by the evening, we were able to figure it out. So I put that little book intro up there just to let you all know that uh, I am trying to finish up a book. It'll be my first book, uh, Alone with Bigfoot. And it's basically a series of reflections and stories that kind of talk through the progression of my thinking about Sasquatch from the very beginning until today. And I've changed my thinking a great deal. And I'm probably going to keep changing my thinking. That's just kind of goes with the territory because as soon as you think you've got them figured out, there's, uh, there's no figuring them out. And there is no expert. There are no experts in the field of Bigfoot research. So there's people that know a lot, but that's, that's a big difference from being an expert. Um, let me put something up here real quick. I want to show you guys. Uh, this is a conference, big conference, 2024. It will be held in Broomfield. If you got my email, I said Centennial. That was wrong. It's going to be in Broomfield. And uh, Jeff Meldrum is the keynote speaker. I'll be speaking as well as Daniel Tosh, the president of this organization called Big Bigfoot Investigative Group that have been around just uh, a couple of years. So uh, they, let me put up there, um, if you're interested, you can go to this website, bigfootinvestigativegroup.com, and check it out. You can register there um, and find out more information about the conference. should be a lot of fun. And Jeff Meldrum is obviously very knowledgeable and a big draw, so hopefully... Um, you guys will be able to attend on the 25th of May, Saturday, the 25th of May. And lastly, uh, we're getting a lot of a lot of people booking with Rabbit Hole Adventures for our trips, um, camping trips and horseback camping trips. And I've mentioned for those who know Jill Herrera, we're going to be camping on her property in rural. Park County near Guffey. So the reason we're going to her property is because that's where the Sasquatch are. So we thought, why take everyone out in the middle of nowhere when the Sasquatch are right there on her property and they come virtually several times a week. So we thought this will be, uh, this will be a great opportunity. And, um, the, uh, we, we figured out that even though we had some activity when we would take people out way out, uh, it's just easier to go where they are. So, and the, and she's, she's very rural, so it will be a lot of fun. And the night hikes, this, I take people out within 30 minutes of Bailey to a number of places where we've had a lot of activity here. So if you're interested in any of those, please sign up and get your spot reserved. Okay, I'm I'm running solo tonight. Um, so if I mess something up, my my moderator Stephanie uh, was out of town and was trying to get back in time, and she did not make it back. Hopefully, she's going to jump in here when she gets back. But anyway, my guests tonight are two guys who I have been on numerous adventures with, uh, backpacking trips, camping trips. And we've had quite a few encounters and there's, there's a couple in particular I wanted them to talk about tonight. One of which involved uh, zapping by Sasquatch. That's a term uh, that people had just kind of invented for this phenomenon that you're going to hear about in a minute with these two guys. So just before I bring them in, let me just, Play this real quick. OK, 
Okay, Jason and Lou, good to have you guys. Hey, Jim. Hey, guys. Jason Frank and Lou French are the guys that were willing to take a risk and come on the Sasquatch Outpost podcast tonight. No, I love it here. I can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys are uh, some of my favorite guests. So um, I am going to uh, let you guys introduce yourselves and just tell tell the the audience tonight just a little bit about yourselves, where you're from. Um, just a little bit about why you do what you're doing, why, why we're looking for Bigfoot. So oh, Jason, man. why don't you go oh, and that could be a whole show, man. Yeah. Oh man. Um, all right. So my name is Jason Frank. Uh, uh, grew up in Montrose, Colorado. <clears throat> That's how me and Lou, we grew up together pretty much for the most part. Um, I have a very extensive life history, army, airborne and infantry and all that stuff. I've been in uh, Bigfoot research now, I think, 17 years. Oh, wow. I, yeah, yeah I'm, losing, I'm losing track. Um, and I've had more encounters than I can even remember or count, um, <laughs> including one, one time with physical contact. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, and then my buddy Lou, we met, uh, we were friends back in high school, and then we reconnected by some freakish weird thing because we moved all <laughs> clear across the state. And I, I, I met him. I'd been a researcher, I think about 10 years by that point. And just by complete accident, we met. And, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I love this subject. I love taking people out there. It's uh, absolutely incredible. And uh, I, me and Jim, man, we've had, we've had quite a few, just me and you. <laughs> yeah. We have. Uh, just, I mean, it's, uh, it, once you know how they think and what you're doing, you can you can make it happen, man. And if you know what you're doing, and I try to teach people that, um, you know, I have a very high success rate. So that's really true, actually. You can. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's just uh, you got to learn how to read them and learn how to think like they do, and uh, then it gets a lot easier. But still, learning, meeting new ones is never easy. When you meet some some of them, they they become friendly with you, and it's not so bad. But when you meet new ones. You don't know which way it's gonna go. Sure. Yeah. And it and it can go either way, right? It can go. Yeah, it can. It can go well yeah, or it can go badly. Most of them are very pleasant, but some of them are absolutely horrific. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you don't know which one you're gonna get. Lou, tell us about yourself. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm a by education. I'm a chemical engineer with a master's in business. Um, I am a uh, no nonsense. Uh, you gotta show me to convince <laughs> me kind of guy, but you're um, not from Missouri. So, uh, no, no, he's um, from Montrose. <laughs> I, I am. I, I, I grew up in Montrose with Jason and, and Sweet. like I said, we kind of randomly found each other again. It turns yeah. out we live in the same That's town. Like 20 and, years. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we, we kind of, kicked up our friendship again and you know you're, you're friends with jason for about five minutes before he goes hey what do you know about bigfoot <laughs> this is true this is and, like, it go. does not take the, he, he wears this on his sleeve yeah um, let's go let's yeah go. and 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 i'm like jason i i don't know a thing um and he says well you know i'm i'm big into this i wrote the, this book it was right before your book was coming out oh yeah i forgot i wrote a book oh yeah yeah, yeah yep. right called the harry's the harry's yep. great book um stolen the sasquatch outpost Yep, it is. absolutely. <laughs> and uh, and Jason says, uh, you know, well, do, do you want to see one? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds just like Jason. Yeah, Welcome you to my see universe. One? Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just a matter of fact, well, do you want to see one? And I'm like, well, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I think I'm pretty much down for whatever. And, um, and so I start hanging out with Jason in the woods, right? And 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 my my philosophy on this was like this can all be bunk. And all I'm be still, explained away, right? Uh, yeah, it can all be explained away and what's the worst thing that happens to me is I go out and hang out in the woods with some cool people and um yeah. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what yeah. What, lose, right? what do I got? What do I got to lose? And it's always fun, no matter what. It's always a blast. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing I like better oh, than yeah. being out in, out in the woods. And yeah. And 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 let's back that up just a little bit. Um, I'm one of those guys that's um, really really comfortable in the backcountry. Um, 
you know, a, a seven day solo backpack trip at 11,000 feet. Okay, let's do it. Let's it, cover in 15 miles a day. Not a problem. I, I, this, now you're talking my world. Me too. And I've spent, I've, I, I grew up, my, my father was a, a forest ranger here in, in Colorado. And if I wanted to spend time with my dad growing up, I had to be outside. Um, some That's of my cool. fondest memories are, you know, clearing trails in the wilderness area with a, you know, crosscut saw and a Pulaski at like 10 and 11 years old. Right. Cause that's, I, I, I just lived in the Colorado outdoors. And so now here I am with Jason and boy, it didn't take, I think Two it was days. third time out. Oh, that's right. I forgot. The, I forgot about the first one. Jim was on that one too. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and it wasn't until the third time out when something yeah. happened that you're like, now, wait a minute, I'm having a hard time rationalizing this one away. Um, and, and it, at the very open, right. Jason says, Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. You know what? I'm not, I hate telling this story. <laughs> I know I you think, do. I know you I, do. I think telling this story, um, uh, makes me sound like an idiot and no, I'm not, I'm not big, I'm not, I'm not big into that, but this, they're this brave. is kind of, um, this is therapy for me. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, because I, I don't like telling the story. Um, we have never told the whole story and had it be recorded before. Together, um, right? Yeah. Together, right? Yeah. All right, let's no, do it. We, we've told pieces of the story, um, but not all of it. Um, when I tell the story, uh, I tell a very nuts and bolts, physically, this is what happened, one thing after the next. Sure. And I leave out. 50% of the story because I don't want to try to explain because it, it's almost too weird, so, right? It's too weird. Hey, hey, Lou, it's too weird. If, um, if you don't mind, I know this is really short, Jim, but if you don't mind me interrupting, if you sure. want me to, I can, I can send, if he feels comfortable, I can send him the recording of what happened after your, I have the recording of your reaction after this. If, if you, oh, if you yeah, I, I, I didn't even know it still existed. Oh, so. I got it, baby. <laughs> oh, well, get, Jim's got to get on the beep button, I'm I know, sure. But it's, because it's totally I was up to you. Unhappy. If you want, I mean, I'll hold it back. It's up to you. Uh, I I don't mind you. I don't mind you okay. playing it. I'll but send, it, I'm it, I'll it might not be appropriate. Well, you're you're gonna weird. you're gonna test my technical abilities I here. Know, man, go I go ahead and send it, and I'll okay. see what I can I'm do. I'm sorry for the short notice. I'm waiting for my my phone to catch up, but I will send it. Yeah. To so and you can see what what really happens to people that never. This is very rare. People don't actually get to see. Right after the realization. Now, where, where, when was this? That you, uh, what the thing you're saying? 2019. I don't know. I'm waiting for my phone to catch up with me. There's a question here for you, Lou. Since while while Jason's doing that, um, let me just put it up here. Come on. Did your dad get any no. reports or details? No. So my father uh, thinks that this is all crazy. He should go with us. I would love to take your dad out. His dad is awesome, by the way. Yeah, and, and my dad's a great, great yes. guy, but he's just, uh, I mean, on the spectrum of logical thinkers, I'm pretty <laughs> far on the logical side. And yeah. he's he's even another step or two, uh, another step or two further than I am. And a uh, uh, great man, but a, a, a huge skeptic when it comes to this. Like I, my, my I have not and right. will never tell him these stories no my dad knows better now but he had to learn hard that's in my book too hey clint hey. good to have you in here too um hey clint good to see you buddy june 2020 does that sound right go, clint okay <laughs> okay <laughs> so um and there was one other question here before we move into the story let's see have you ever heard any drumming or stick hits with oh Sasquatch? yeah I couldn't count how many. Oh yeah, and language, and like sounds like a yeah. kid's playground. I've had them scream at me. I've had them pee on me and fart next to my tent. You name it, I've had it all. <laughs> all bodily functions. Yeah. I know oh, all bodily much. functions. They are real. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. It's crazy um, what they'll do. So, and we're gonna. I'm sure we're gonna have time to talk about more than this event. But I wanted you guys to talk about this particular one. And we're not going to 
divulge the location, but it was near Steamboat Springs, correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm just going to let you guys take it away. And uh, if I get some good questions here for you, I'll put them up on the screen. So go okay. for it. I'll lead in because I've been there for years. Uh, this was one of my favorite spots. Still is my favorite spot. Um, and people find this hard to believe, and I've lost count. I'm, I'm just estimating, but I've probably had around 500 encounters. Oh, most of them are within like <laughs> 10 feet. And most of it happens at this particular spot. I probably had two to 300 of them happen in this one spot. And it's a specific campsite. Now, not to say that's secluded or the only place there where I've had, like the where I had the one that touched me was about a half a mile up the road. Um, uh, but this area, I've, I've really concentrated for years there. And this one particular spot, I went there many, many times. And Lou, uh, you know, being a longtime buddy, and I was trying to get him to get on board. If he wanted to have an encounter, that's the place to do it. And it was so funny because he'd gone on that trip with you and I and uh, up on Pikes Peak. And that was, uh, we, had a, we had some stuff happen there, but nothing like really in your face. It was very subtle, which typically happens up there. Yeah. But when they get more familiar, I mean, they're like playing with zippers on your tent and they don't care. They will, <laughs> I've actually had them drag me across the ground in my tent with my wife and my dogs in the tent and pull up all the stakes. I mean, people don't, don't realize what this really happens. And so Lou was going up there ahead of time. And I said, are you sure you're, you're okay going up by yourself? And he goes, Oh yeah. Why? I'm not afraid of nothing up there. <laughs> okay. Then rock on. I'll see you. Rock there. on. <laughs> yeah. And so he took off. Go and, for it. Uh, he stayed the night and it was so funny because like, I remember when, I'll never forget me, me and my wife and my dogs were driving down there to go see him and set up our camp and his little tent was set up. And I'm like, so how was your night? He goes, perfectly normal nothing happened i'm like mm. okay let's yep. see what happens tonight and then the next day everything went went bananas <laughs> and, yeah. and, and i did i did i did exactly what jason says yep. says to do right yeah i i got there i set up made a little fire started playing some country music you know was cooking on the tailgate <laughs> was mm -hmm. you know dancing around i was just having i was in my element grand I mean, old time yeah. whatever Deaf, dumb yeah. and blind just, baby Deaf, just dumb and blind trying to be, um, you know, trying to be entertaining, but n nothing happened that night. There wasn't so much as a peep. They were just watching nothing. you, dude. They were, <laughs> on you. they were warming up. They were warming <laughs> they were like, up. What, who's this fool? Who is this? Because guy? we were there, we were there four nights. Four or five. I lost four or I, five I nights. I look at my calendar, but yeah, I have it on my yeah. calendar. Uh -huh. Yeah. But that was the first night. Mm -hmm. And then me and Liz set up everything up. And then, then the next night was when, Everything went totally bonkers, and yeah. we have we had so much sightings out there. Was it was just a, I mean, like during the day, people were seeing them in the, in the daytime, and they're shaking trees, and you didn't know if you go to the bathroom if you're going to see one when you're on the toilet. And and there's a there's a large group of them up there. It's a huge family. I'm guessing yeah. probably around a hundred. Yeah, and you've heard them, Jim. You know, there's yeah. a bunch of them up there. They'll carry on a full blown conversation forever. You know, once you get them going, but Lou just kind of toughed it out and you know and then the, the next night we had a lot of people moving in and out we had probably i don't know 20 25 people up there yeah you had a big group bigger group had a big, yeah. had a big group yeah we did and then it thinned out seriously over a couple of days but you know clint was there and um you know and, and that was one of my best tracks and up until last year with you jim up there outside of bailey that one that one actually beat the, the cast from that this event which is so now those are my two top two best casts i've ever gotten and they're amazing yeah and yeah, uh and so yeah a little, a little boy named luke uh, found that uh at the baw last year and i'm working on getting the mold they just poured the mold yesterday so i'm waiting to have the mold sent to me so if i get a copy you guys will get one so, sweet. sweet yeah that thing's really awesome it's like it was big yeah it was big long and eight inches wide and it's perfect but anyway going back to lou's thing so I'll just leave you with that. You know, Lou had, had no activity and we, we moved in and set up our camp. Yeah. And so just kind of paint the picture, right? This is, this is a dirt road off a dirt road off of a dirt road. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. yep. um, it's by Colorado standards. Not it's that rough. Not remote. No. It's not that remote. It's not that rough. Um, you know, like, mm. like you were saying with your rabbit hole adventures, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to go deep no, in very the far. Country, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're your nearest dumpster. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we're at the end of this, this short little dirt road that, that takes off from the, you know, the next bigger dirt road. And there's, I'm there in a little, um, you know, my, my three season, uh, North face, you know, three man, sure. four man tent, right. That's is what I'm in. But, and Jason's across the, across the road in his tent and there's two or three people with, um, uh, you know, tra- uh, campers on the back of their pickups. There's another folk, another person there with, uh, you know, one of those tents in the back of the, the pickup. Right. And yeah, couple that, a couple other people, that was my friends. Yep. A yep, mm-hmm. couple other people in, in tents, a little bit closer to the main road, you know, but we're all just kind of strung out along this road. And me and I, those were up in the woods. We were kind yep. of back in the trees. Yep. And I was on the other side of the road from Jason closest to uh the creek that runs right through there and 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 that becomes that becomes important um as as we move forward so i wasn't in the trees i was out in the meadow just a little bit uh the really the closest tent though to the creek um which is you know the direction that all the fun eventually came from and Um, how how close was the closest tent to you uh, to me, uh, probably, probably probably Clint, maybe 25, Clint, 30 feet. 20, 20 yards. And I was about 40 feet, maybe. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So nobody's very far away. No. Yeah. Um, you know, close enough that if, if, um, you know, there's some yelling and screaming, everybody's, everybody's going to hear. You, you hope they hear it. You hope yeah. they hear it. Sometimes we don't hear anything. Yeah, right so. on top of you going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think this was, the, I think this was the third night we were out and, um, um, it was getting late. Um, like it was, it was after midnight. Um, like I said, I, I, I grew up, I grew up with a forest ranger. So as long as the fire is going in camp, I can't go to sleep. Right. If, if for some reason a fire in my camp tore out, um, my father would disown me and shoot me. So, uh, I always make sure oh, that the, I that, get the it. that the, that the, fire is is well put out and uh um it's getting late and the weather was weird um there was must have been a front coming through but there'd be long periods of relatively no wind followed by short really gusty winds um one gust came up and even you know threw a bunch of coals you know 15 20 feet out of the the fire ring which was exactly while i was up yeah and and so it was good. I was up, stopped any of that from, from happening. But, but what it did was it, it meant at the end, it's, it's one thirty or two in the morning. And, um, I'm the last guy, I'm the last guy standing. And, and, you know, one of the, the, you know, rules Jason had kind of laid out is, you know, you, you need to be where you're supposed to be when you're when supposed, you're supposed, to, be supposed to be there. Right. They're no, come from no, everywhere else. No, 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 yeah. no don't, don't be rolling you know, around. You, you want to be, predi- you want to be predictable. Mm-hmm. So here I am now at two o'clock in the morning and I'm the only person up and it's, it's time to go to bed. Well, I, I don't think anything of it. I, I, I walk over to my, my tent and I, I actually uh, lit up one of those single um, candle um, lanterns, you know, th- don't hardly cast any light, but, uh, but it, you know, hanging inside my tent and I started that up and I was like, man, I really got to go to the bathroom. And it's, you know, of course it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, everybody who was there had set up, you know, little latrines behind their campers and stuff, but it's two o'clock in the morning <clears throat> and things have been, you know, we starting to hear things. People have, I think had a daytime sighting yeah, by did. then. Yeah. I yep. hadn't, I hadn't Absolutely. seen anything yet, but so tensions were a little high. And so the last thing I wanted to be was, um, you know, grunting and growling um, <laughs> behind somebody's tent. Yeah. And so even though everybody had been very nice and they're like, Hey Lou, when you got to go you can bodily noises yep. when it's, when it's dead quiet. Yeah. 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 I'm like, Barton, right, nah. Norin, you big attractions. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, yeah. But uh, I, I, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm certainly no stranger to, to, taking a dump in the woods so i i take off and i go about i don't know let's call it 30 yards and there's a little collection of 
of trees, a little, you know, a little aspen cluster, okay. right? And it's where they're like, you know, all, they're all three or four inches in diameter. And I've got my headlamp on, but I've got it on the lowest setting, right? I don't, I don't need to see anything. It is really dark too. Um, pitch black. Oh, it yeah. is, it is, it is pitch black. There wasn't, there was not no a moon, full moon, stars. obviously. There no, was nothing. nothing. It was dark, dark, dark. But all, I mean, all I needed to be able to see was the ground. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't care. So I get over there and, and um, going to, going to do my business. And, um, you know, my, my, my preferred method of, of going in the woods is to use the stripper, po- the stripper pole method. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're going to have to explain that one. So, so that's, that's where you're great. So the, all these trees were just perfect you know, like this okay. big around, but that's where you, you hook one hand onto the, to the tree <laughs> and then in front of you, but then you can kind of, you can bend down and, and do your business and you, but you've got that stripper pole there in front of you to hold on to. I'm never going to, I'm never going to forget that term when I'm it's out there. My fa- It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that the log growler. The log yeah. And so, so I, you know, I, I dig a little cat hole, you know, where I gotta go. Okay. I, I drop my drawers. You know, I've got the headlamp on, but it's in the, the literally the lowest setting. And I squat down, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically done. The right? most, it's the most vulnerable done. moment. Yeah. Any yeah, of us I, can have. Oh yeah, yeah. This is literally getting caught with your pants down. Exactly. Um, and and I'm staring like my if I look straight out, I'm looking towards the Creek. Okay. Which is 50 yards away, 45 yards away is where the Creek actually is. But of course I can't see that far. It's everything is absolutely pitch black. All I can see is the, the tree in front of me. Well, and I'm, I'm starting to get myself put back together and, and something whistles at me like just a big, but it's it sounds like it's coming from something that weighs a thousand pounds. Oh, it's God. so deep, right? It's so deep and was kind of long and drawn out. And the problem was it was like ten feet away. right? It is it is <laughs> right right there, there. <laughs> right there. And I'm like, like I knew. Like I knew immediately, like there, there's, there is nothing in the woods that whistles like that, that Hmm. it's like, this is like, I, so I immediately know I'm having, I'm having a a Sasquatch encounter. Like there's, there's no doubt in my mind immediately. And so I'm, I, I don't remember, you know, pulling my pants up. I don't remember covering up the cat hole right i don't think what, you did no i did because <laughs> I, I went back and checked the next day because i wasn't sure and i didn't want somebody stepping in it but so i i, I turned to my left and basically 90 degrees to my left you know, i can see my tent 30 yards away it's got the candle lantern in it and so it's just kind of glowing um and i i turned i turned and looked at it and i know that this thing is so close to me i was like man I, I don't understand why i can't hear you breathing right you are it because it's that close and and i i looked up this is after i looked at the tent i looked up and i actually reached up to my my headlamp and i was going to go tap tap to the high beam and i couldn't make myself do it <laughs> i just I, I like i was i i physically unable to make myself do it because it would have lit it would have lit up everything you you knew what you were going to see and i didn't want to see it yeah no i get that and i could i couldn't make myself do it which is wild because you know you you want to see what you want this is what i'm here here for right uh but I, i could not make myself do it and i remember like like i turned back towards the tent and i've got my head down and i i I literally said this. Now this I said out loud. I said, "Oh, just don't growl at me." And what I got back was, and, and immediately, like, you know, oh, please just don't growl at me. And then immediately I get this response back that is half a growl, half a huff, you know, a little bit of a laugh that just kind of goes, <laughs> hmm. and I'm like, "Oh dear!" And it is literally, it is 
This is the exact same spot. Nothing's moved, right? It is right there, and it is it is deep. It's yep. not not unfriendly. No, he right? did let you know he was there. No, it it, it, it was much it, it was much <laughs> more of a. All right, I whistled. You didn't leave. I'm gonna make another sound. Like you need to you need to go. And at that point, right? So I said, "Oh, just don't growl at me." And then I get this. <laughs> It's like the <laughs> hair on the back of my neck is standing up. Ooh, um, baby. Now, I, I, when I'm in the woods, I'm almost always carrying a, a 10 millimeter. Um, 10 millimeter is not with me. 10 millimeter is in, in the tent. And so I'm like, man, <laughs> I don't want to be here. I want to be, I want to be over there. Yeah. <clears throat> and, How far uh, were you from your tent at this about point? Thirty, about thirty yards. Okay, so a good, good bit there. So it's it's a it's a good it's a good bit. Um, and so I I turn and I and I start, I start walking that direction. And I'm going slow. I wasn't saying anything. Um. And this is when, like, you know. Here I am a non-believer and I went from, well, not a non-believer, just a super skeptic. Um, I went from super skeptic to. Please don't kill me. Full on <laughs> woo experience. Uh-huh. Right. In the first, you know, 90 seconds. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about this as we go forward. It gets stranger and stranger as we go, but I, I'm turning and I'm, and I'm, I'm looking at the tent and I don't know what mind speak is. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know what people really experience when they experience mind speak, but there was a voice in my head that says, you are not where you're supposed to be. Now, was that Jason? <laughs> the echoes <laughs> of Jason? Cool. I would like that. Right? Get in but, your tent, boy. Then I can finally but basic, but like, basically no, it was, <laughs> you are not where you're supposed to be. Yeah, and, no, and I'm I like, no, yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Well, I, I take a, a couple of steps, you know, maybe, I, maybe I've gone 10 or 15 steps, not very far. And, and, <laughs> you know, I had said out loud, just don't growl at me. And I got this weird thing back. Well, now I get something that's a little more forceful. It, Did it, you it, say it again or so? no, okay. but like, it, it triggered a, a, an amazing response in me that that's it's embarrassing to, to say it right but i get i i i'm I've, I've moved like 15 steps but now i get this which is definitely on the less friendly oh. end of the scale and uh i turned with my my fists balled at my side and and i yelled into the darkness i'm surprised nobody heard uh, with, w- with all the people that were actually camping around. Um, but I yell into the darkness. It's like, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to die. And I'm standing there just wow. fist clenched. And I'm like, boy, that sounds really stupid, even though I just said it. But then. <laughs> yeah, right? You can imagine what someone yeah, in the tent like, would have thought. Oh, yeah. They hear yeah. you yell that. They're like, what <laughs> is going on out there? Yeah. Bring and so it, the kindergartner. We show <laughs> Yeah. So at that point, I covered the ground to the tent very quickly because now I'm <laughs> yeah. angry marching, you know, fists clenched. And I march to the tent, you know, hoping for that uh, two mil nylon to save me. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and and so I, I climb in the tent, zip it up. Of course, now I'm now I'm cuddling with the 10 millimeter <clears throat> and the way I'm laying um, in the tent. Um, I, well, I, I was on the side. I moved to the middle of the tent. It's like, I don't want to be anywhere near the, near the sides. That's going <laughs> to save you at all. Um, but my head is towards the side of the tent that is closest to the creek. Right. And so I'm just laying there. And as I said, at the beginning of the story, the weather was weird. It would go from very windy to not windy. And as the night went on, it got kind of more and more severe, you know, um, gusts would be now or 15 or 20 miles an hour, you know, pretty substantial gusts of wind, but still with periods of almost nothing in between them. And I'm laying there and this big gust comes 
and it stops hmm. and I hear two footsteps. And I'm, the, the first, I don't know, at least the first two times, you know, wind, wind blows, wind stops, step, step. At least the first two times I was like, I'm not really hearing that. Like, I'm just, I'm super <laughs> stressed out. That was really weird. Now my mind is making stuff up. Um, and I'm not really hearing it. But then by the fourth or the fifth time, these footsteps are really, really close. Um, until the last one, there's a step, step. And it is, you know, my head is only 10 inches from the end of the the tent and that last step is at the edge of the tent it is that close and i'm just Mm. staring in that direction and i'm thinking man you are so close i should be able to hear you breathe and but i there's nothing 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 then there was the next big gust of wind and i think he either stepped on or tripped over one of the the lines Mm -hmm. i had strapping the tent down yep um and because the whole tent just goes, they go, doosh, boing, just, yeah. yeah. And I'm immediately hovering, you know, three feet in the air. Um, and uh, just if I hadn't already gone to the bathroom, I would have got the <laughs> pants right there for sure. Um, oh, man. But then I settle back down and the wind continues to go and stop, go and stop, go and stop. And there was never another, hmm. you never heard anything else. I never heard him leave. Yeah, they just like, vanished like that. In my, in my mind, he was like, still standing the there. Yeah. And so every Wouldn't, time yeah. it was quiet, I was listening, listening, listening. Yep. Yeah. Never heard another thing. Um, slept with my lantern on that night. Um, I'm not a person who's afraid of the dark. Now I'm. It's I'm, a healthy respect. It's a healthy respect sure. of the dark now. Um, but so. And that's it. And, and I remember when the sun came up, I'm thinking, I am not going to be the first person up today. You know, and even though I would have been in bed at two o'clock in the morning, uh, I'm still almost always going to be the first person up. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to be the last person up today. So I curled. I, and curled why, why was that, Lou? Just I, I didn't, I didn't want, if I was, I, I was not convinced that I, you could walk out as the sun is coming up and there wouldn't have been, no. I wouldn't have had company, in, company, company out there. In, mm-hmm. in, in, in camp. Right. I didn't want to have that. I was done having an experience. I didn't want to have any more experience. And so I wake up and Jason is um, uh, cooking breakfast for everybody. Uh, this is kind of what Jason and I do when we go camping with everybody. We make really one, good team. One of us, oh, is, yeah. one of us is cooking. And yeah. so Jason's making we breakfast. We eat well. When we go and camping, I, and I, I, uh, I get out of the tent, and I'm probably 25 yards from Jason, and I, I got out of the tent, and I made just made eye contact with Jason from 25 yards away, and his eyes get big, and he starts walking towards me, and he points at me, and he goes, "What did you see?" Because he could tell, <laughs> he could tell wow. I was not okay. I can written all it. over your face. Yep, it was written. I mean, I must have looked like a like I'd seen a ghost because he knew the moment we made eye contact, he's like, what did you see? And Mm. so, you know, and and then we relay the story and, and it was wild and, and we'll, we'll get into, to some of the other woo components of this in a minute, but um, we found tracks and hands. Yeah. They were so, so I go then and I start looking for tracks between the tent and, and the Creek. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a lifelong hunter. I, you know, track stuff for miles and miles and miles. And I'm like, man, Jason, I just don't see anything. Well, Jason finishes up with everybody's breakfast, comes over and, and he starts looking and pretty soon he's like, okay, here's one. Here's another. I'm good here's at another, it. Here's another. And over the course of two hours there, we Jason's able to map 27, out 27 27 footprints, I think. Yeah, got wow. A lot. In like, in like, you could so, like, yeah, I, I don't know if the number was four or five Sasquatch came up Multiple. from the creek, from the creek, yep. kind of spaced out and walked up towards camp. And we were able to backtrack those one of them all the way to the point where he crossed the creek. 
Mm-hmm. What was the what was the soil like there? Because it's hard to get tracks it's in Colorado. It's, it's hard. rock, and then you have like little piles of like molehills where they rooted up, and big, and that's where we got the one really good track. Okay, but yeah. usually it's just scuffs, and you'll find like leaves that are peeled off, and you got to really, you know, and as you know, Jim, I teach this class on how to track them. It's, yeah. it's very technical. They are probably the hardest thing to track, and Lou's pretty good at it now, but. You know, it's like if you're used to tracking regular animals, it's not like track. They'll jump from one rock to the next, and you space them out, and then you can figure it out, and you'll find them. But you got to learn how to think like they do. Yeah, it's it's well, super it's, it's super tough. subtle. And Scott Scott subtle. mentioned a minute ago that he's still afraid of the dark at 45. I feel your pain, bro. Um, I still ah. have times where I'm afraid of the dark at 62. So I like yeah. them out there. I don't mind it. You know. Um, but it takes a lot, I and mean, I've had a few times where I was pooping myself for sure. So, I so in my I'll, coffee cup once. I'll, I'll I'll set up this next portion of it, and then I'll hand it over to Jason, and I'll yeah, I'll yeah. to to kind of sure, tell sure. the part of the story that I hate telling, <laughs> and then I'll 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 add a little bit into it. But uh, it it was the next day. Mm-hmm. It was late the next day mm-hmm. when we realized that we had a. 4k camera pointed directly at my tent yep all night long from my truck from oh, from okay. jason's truck yeah um and so jason want to tell him what we saw and oh god this is a, this so we had at, at that point i think we had around 24 25 people in the camp there's a lot of people and the weekend was kind of ending and we a lot of us were still staying uh, my wife was leaving along with many other people were packing up our friends from the from the, I don't know if they wanted to use their names, but I talked to them regularly. Um, they were the ones that were camping in the back of the truck uh, directly across from Lou's tent. And uh, there was uh, a lot of people there, my friend, Mike, and um, Lou was with me on this one. And anybody that goes, as you know, uh, my, my dogs and my cats are my babies and uh, Sophie, uh, she's my doll. And, uh, I never leave her anywhere. And my wife, Liz, had just went back home and took our dog, Harley, who was just a, barely a puppy. I can send you pictures of that if, of that if you want to see it, Jim. Um, but uh, it, that was the first time we ever had him. He, he, he still oh. had stitches from getting fixed and all that stuff. So we, we load up and we had to get more gas and water. And so we packed up and everybody else, a lot of people were packing up and getting ready to leave. And this is before we even realized we had the, the recording from my camera in the truck we were i mean and and everyone was kind of mentally affected slightly i think i think that's maybe why we missed it because everybody was a little bit off um so we're driving down the road going to get resupplied and uh i get like halfway to town about 20 miles away and i realize oh shit i forgot sophie at camp Oh, by gosh. herself with all this stuff going on. And we we're having Sasquatch stuff happening in the middle of the day, like right, right next to camp. And so what do you do? You turn around, you finish the, the run. Well, I knew that two of our friends, uh, very experienced Sasquatch people were still at camp. So I'm like, well, they're still there. She'll stay there. And so we, uh, we continued on to get our supplies, came back as fast as we could. By that time, everybody had left the camp for the most part, except for me and Lou, um, another person, and my friend Noel, and um, uh, the other two that were there. And they were going to be leaving earlier, uh, later that day. And um, so we've been in town. We've been gone maybe an hour and a half, and I was worried sick about her. And I get there, and Sophie's running around with her hair furled up, and she's like the friendliest dog out there. And she's just ready to just bite somebody's head off. And the other guy's running around. He goes, oh, my God, I just heard the loudest whoop of my entire career, and it was right next to the camper. We're talking like 2 in the afternoon. And his dog's howling inside the camper and trying to calm – his wife's trying to calm it down. And I'm trying to calm down my dog. And it was, it was chaos, really. Um, and what would you attribute all that to? I, the, the Sasquatch were right in camp. I mean, they were right there at 2 in the afternoon screaming and banging on stuff. And Sophie was on alert from all that. And so, uh, yeah, so that was, that was kind of unnerving. And then, uh, so the other two people left and then that left me and Lou with, uh, the other two. 
and uh, they were running my truck up and down the mountain for other reasons and uh, and just driving the wheels off of it and uh, so we stayed at camp and um, I don't know it was about an hour passed after we got all the, everything settled in and I said you know we got that 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 disc that I remembered and that that's funny because and this is how this this goes and people don't believe this it mentally affects you in ways you can't imagine. It will make you so stupefied and so lost. Like I said, it was just a miracle that I even remembered. Like when I, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot my dog. And then I looked up and I saw the dash cam of my truck and I said, I think I recorded your stuff. Huh. You know, and how so long, think, what's your, what's your time before it loops and starts to record 16 over? hours uh, before it loops it. We missed it okay. by two hours. We were so coming up on losing it. about two hours. It would have, it would have erased it. You're right. Mm -hmm. So I saved the disc. We get back and I'm still kind of, and, and you got to remember, we're, we're still affected before all this goes. You're mentally, I mean, you can barely function. You're just trying to get through the day and get things done. And Lou knows this. It's, it's very profound unless you've experienced it. There's no way to even explain it. And so we get there and all this stuff. And we, we, we did that. We got our fuel and we got our ice and everything. We come back and all this stuff, other hap all this other stuff happens. The other two people leave and that leaves us, the four of us. And uh, the other two took my truck and they went up to do their, their stuff. And that's when I told Lou, I said, Hey, we got that disc. Let's pull it up on my computer. And that's, I don't know if you got the, do you have that video? Um, did you send it by email I, I or by? through your text? No, I sent, I sent it through your text. Okay. I'm going to see if I can find it. And that's um, the video I just sent you. This is what you guys are going to see is right after we reviewed the video. And it's so, just me and Lou, and we're wow. by ourselves at ground zero. And our brains are melting because, whoa, was it crazy. And, Tell me and, that was not a life, that was a life-altering thing. It and was, and would you guys, so so here's here's the the key question of, of the evening is, you know, obviously it sounds like you guys were physically affected, mentally affected, the dogs were. And, and we use this term zapped. Some people will say sizzled. What does that mean to you guys? What do you think is going on? I, I, so it's happened to me three times. This time that I'm talking about here was the most profound one that's ever happened to me. I know for me and Lou, I think it affected us both about a week to 10 days. I mean, it was a long time. And, and, but the first time it happened, which I have a chapter in my book, I had one that peed on my tent. <laughs> that affected me, I think, four or five days. That was terrifying. I had nightmares about that for three months. Um, and, and when I, you that, say affected, just so everybody understands, what's going on that would tell you that something had happened to you? It's like you're not cognitively there. Hmm. You feel like you're just kind of going through the motions. You feel kind of fuzzy-headed and it, weird. It, even, and tie, it like, even tying your shoelaces is a project. Oh, yeah. It's hard to function. Okay. You feel like, and, and, and there's a pressure on you. It's like when you put on a like a, uh, a scuba suit, you know, like a, like a wetsuit, that pressure, it feels like that, but it's everywhere. It's around your face. It's in your nostrils. It's everywhere. Okay. And, and so we had that happen. And so we look at this, this video and find some absolutely just incredible, crazy stuff from the video. Um, which I don't let me, know. Let I still me, don't even know how to explain that. Uh, let, let me, let me try to explain some of it. Yeah, so go the, for it. the, the tent is perfectly in frame. Of okay. the camera, it's a little far away, and it's a tinted window. And okay, it's a, and it's a tinted window, right? And it's just a single candle lantern in my tent, right? So this is not. There's nothing about this that's clear, right? No, nope. you can tell that the tent is there. You can tell it's my tent. You can see me go in, light it, and walk off frame to the right with my headlamp because you just see the headlamp, Bob off to the side uh and this is this is where things start to get weird um the time it took me to go over there and go to the bathroom is probably three minutes okay the time it took me to walk from there back to the tent is between the first whistle and i'm at the tent is maybe 90 seconds where this is not a long time i was off of frame of the camera and you see me walk back and 
kind of mm-hmm. you know, I walk away yeah. nice and slow. I come back eh, kind of fast and dive into the tent. And it's more than 15 minutes have gone by. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, that's, that's weird. So this is where, yep. like, this, this is really the first thing. We're, we're, we're watching this the first time, and you're just like, whoa. What? And you're and sitting I, in the camp where it happened by yeah. yourself. Me and Lou <laughs> yeah. are going, what are we looking at? It's like, dude, no, 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 no. Like, no, dude, no, I was gone. I was gone for just a couple of minutes. And we're like, yeah. we thought maybe it had stopped recording or something, but here we are 15, wow. 18, 20 minutes. I don't remember the exact number, Yeah. but then here I come, you know, quick stepping back into the, into the tent and you can see me get into the mm. tent. And, and I say, I say to Jason, you know, um, it, there was, you know, the, I'm, I'm describing this to Jason. And I think this is part of the audio that he, he has recorded where it's like, I'm, I'm basically giving, a play by play of what's going on. Right. And so I'm telling Jason the story of, you know, the wind is blowing and it would stop every two minutes or three minutes. And then I'd hear a couple footsteps. And so I'm like, so, and, and so what we see is on the same pattern of when I would say, okay, now the wind would not be blowing. There's, um, um, sparkly lights begin appearing over the top of the tent they're like and they would they, like and fireflies and they don't they're not like flashing they're intelligent they're no they're floating. yeah they're floating yeah. there and and then they go wow. away completely and then i'm like well you know and 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 i think this is where the timing finally gets us i said well about now is be when the 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 wind stops again and sure enough the lights go over the top of the tent again wow and so i I, I think this is what Jason says he's got recorded is my reaction reaction to right reaction after, to right watching after, the video watching this right the first time and it video. and it's and it's not good I'm cussing it's up not. a storm I don't like this I don't want and it's just me and him with this and and we've got to remember all this stuff we already had people leave we already had Sophie <laughs> we, out. we already had people screamed at we've had multiple we had 27 footprints and this is I mean this, this is the at the end of all of that and there's more to follow after this. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you, and I don't know if you can pull that up, Jim. I don't know if you. Can, I I'm trying, but it's not letting me for some reason. So, so, anyway. so then, then the next t- typical uh, woo thing happens. Um, we try to watch that section of video again, and, and it deleted gone. itself. It, it wasn't deleted. there. It's gone. No, we watched it delete. Remember, we watched it, and you were like, "I can't stop it. I can't stop it." And it was just yep. like it just deleted itself. It's gone. And so I we got we got to we got to watch, we got to watch this. Me walk away, come back, lights but, over the tent. Yeah, the we got to watch it one time, um, and then it was that file was just in gone. broad in broad daylight. It deleted itself with no internet connection, no nothing. And could it, you see in the video? Because you were sure that that uh, one Sasquatch at least came up to your tent. Could you see anything? No. If, no, if you somebody would have... You can see a yeah. flashlight doing this. You if know, somebody, if, if they would have walked between the tent and the camera, okay. you would have been able to see a outline at least. But it all happened on the other side of the tent, and so there, there was mm-hmm. there's nowhere near enough light. And but could you then, see lights from inside the tent? Do you remember anything? No, I saw no. nothing. No. Okay. And then when we looked at the front tent, because the front of my, my front camera was aimed at my tent and the rear camera was aimed at his, and you can see the same lights on my tent as well. Wow, right? Crazy. It was I think they got everybody at the same time, whatever it was. I don't know what it was. But the thing is, all this happened, and me and Lou, I mean the shock, there is there is not a there is not a number high enough to rate the shock that we were in. Wow. And we were I mean, wow! That I mean, <laughs> some, it's, there's no words for that. Yeah, then, I, I've gone from from full skeptic to uh, you know full woo experiencer in the span of about 16 hours, and yeah, and I'm not I'm not okay. I'm, I'm no, not you okay. had a hard time dealing with it. Mm-hmm. You did. And I tried and, to help you as much as I could because I I I've been through it before, but that one that one was rough. And then, so the next morning, I don't know if you want to get into that. So, so they, so it was me and Lou left there for the night by ourselves for the last night. And uh, so it was me, Lou, and my dog, Sophie. 
Now, and, let uh, me ask you, let me just interrupt to ask you. So everybody's gone. You've had this crazy experience the night before. Were you at all reticent to be there on your own now, the two of you? I was just because, I, I mean, I've had so many experiences there. I fully trust the Sasquatches up there. I do. If I had my choice, I would like to, I would stay up there in full time with them. I would. Um, but the other weird stuff on the outside, you know, when you have that going on, it, it does make you a little bit uh, nervous, you know. But at the same time, I've been down, the, for me personally, I've been down that road so many times. I'm kind of an old hand at that. And I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay here. Let's see where this goes. And poor Lou is just trying to hang on. Well, you know? and, and if and if if Jason Jason was staying, I wasn't leaving. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't he would not leave me. No, would and you Jason, would you have stayed on your own? No, no oh hell no. No, he no. would have left that <laughs> afternoon. No. No. Oh, I'd have yeah, been, probably the, I'd have been all gone. <laughs> yeah, all gone. What? No, just so, before we go on, what would you say to this question? Uh, because that's appropriate to ask at this point. Um, does it? Does Sasquatch have the ability to manipulate digital media? Do you think? Well, so no, they don't. Um, which I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I can't share that with you for different reasons. But um, I do have footage from that. We did we did film some stuff in the daytime and at night. We have the lights. Um, there's some legal reasons I can't share all that stuff. Um, but um, I know that they can manipulate stuff. I know they can knock out. We have lost vehicles. We've lost three vehicles at once. We have lost drones, cameras, flashlights. Um, Man, like an empty, empty batteries or something. You guys like. would not believe, yeah, you're, for your audience, you guys would not believe the crazy things I have seen with vid vehicles and batteries at that campsite. I have literally seen, like, cars get drained down to nothing. Hmm. Nothing. The, there's nothing there. Like, at one minute, it's playing a radio, and the next minute, everything's drained, and you think, oh, well, I'm just going to have to jump that stupid thing. We bring, like, three battery packs there because they drain them all the time. And then all of a sudden, your car... The alarm goes off and the trunk opens. <laughs> I mean, this this stuff really happens. I've seen it numerous times, and they will when they can zap like three cars at one time. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what's going on here. Um, but my faith, especially <laughs> with that group, is that they they are. Um, yeah, how do I? Um, <laughs> Clint's yeah. asking, how much alcohol <laughs> did you guys consume? Clint. Yeah, quite a bit. Um, <laughs> But smart I mean, they, Alec, you know, they can, they, they, they can do things that just will blow your mind and it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Yeah. And so going on with the rest of the story, yeah. after all that, let's get back to your story. All, all that stuff happened. Um, so we, we went to bed and, uh, I went to my tent with Sophie and Sophie, uh, she was still only a year or so old. So she'd only had a couple encounters with them and now she's an old hand. She don't growl at them anymore. You know, you'll see that on my mm -hmm. YouTube, which is uh, Bigfoot of the Rockies Outdoor Adventures. If you guys want to check it out, Jim's on there, and so is Lou. Um, but uh, they, um, you know, she she at that time she still didn't know that you know they're not they're not mean, they're not malicious. People don't need to be afraid of them. Yes, they're intimidating. Yes, they're powerful. And yes, they're gruff. But they're they could have hurt me a million times, and they haven't done anything. And that's by their choice. Um, but anyway, so the next morning, well, we get, I get in the tent that night, and uh, it was me and Sophie in the, in the cot, and I had a 12-gauge in my pistol. And, I mean, as soon as I zipped the tent door shut, the, like always, they walk right up to the tent door. There's like three of them. They're having a conversation six feet away, and my dog's growling and barking at him. And I'm trying to uh, calm her down so that we don't escalate things. And I don't, you know, I'm trying, they're my friends, and I want her to know that, you know, this is a good place. And um, I finally just went to bed because I'm used to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next morning, I get up thinking I, I'm pretty well rested. But I get up and, my again, my head feels really weird. Like it's just this weird fuzziness, like like a halfway lobotomy. I, like, you, <laughs> like, well, I'm putting my pants on, but am I putting them on right kind of a thing? It's, mm -hmm. it's a weird thing. It's, it's hard to put into words. And I got up and uh, I remember sitting there and I go to take my sleeping bag off and my legs have bled through to my sleeping bag. And I'm like, what in the world? Like there, my, I have scabs on my legs for no reason. And they have bled through my sleeping bag. Wow. And I peel them off my legs. And uh, the one on my left probably could have taken a few stitches. And I'm like, 
I'm like in what? inside your sleeping bag during yeah, the night. Yeah, I'm in my bed and like I have gone nowhere. <laughs> I've been in the tent huh. the whole time, and I and I wake up and Sophie keeps like like she got a hair in her ear and she's shaking her head and she I know it affected her too. It got everybody, and she's like all acting all weird. I'm like, you need to go potty, girl. So I open the door and let her out, and she's shaking her head, and, and I'm like, man, what the hell is wrong with me? And I got to check on Lou, and it was about seven thirty in the morning, and I walk up to Lou and. And he's getting out of his tent and I'm like, how you doing, man? He goes, I feel really weird. I'm like, me too. And then he's like, what happened to your legs? I'm like, I don't know. And I was like, what happened to yours? And he's got the same wounds. Wow. And I don't, I, I don't know. Neither, neither one of us knows where that happened. I mean. Almost, almost looks like he got hit by a two by like, four across the yeah, shin. Yeah, right across Ouch. your shin. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and you had the same loop? I had, like I had the same marks on my leg. Yeah. The exact, Didn't make a lick like, of sense. Like somebody's dragging you across a like a like a door jam, and they yep. just and you just smacked wow. your shins. And I don't recall any of that, but I was not right for a week or ten days after that. I mean, I functioning was really difficult. Huh. Yeah, you both have mentioned to me in the past that when you went home to Castle Rock, that weird, like you just said, that weirdness didn't just stop. No, it didn't. Um, it didn't. Hung around, hung yeah. around for days and days. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think the first day, because the next day I had to go to work after we got home. And I, I went and saw people in town, went through my local rounds before I went to my office and all that stuff. And and uh, that first day, I remember I went and saw, I got my coffee and got a muffin and went to my office. And I looked down and I realized I've been walking around town with my pants completely undone. And the only thing holding my pants up was my belt. <laughs> Gosh. I swear to God, everything just out there. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? And right about then, Lou calls me up and he goes, dude, how you feel? I'm like, not very good. And he's like, I've been staring at my warm-up screen for like two hours. And I'm like, and I'm like, I just walked around town half naked. I don't huh. even know what just happened, you know? Wow. But, and, 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 I, and people always ask that. You're like, well, is it like an infrasound thing? I, 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 I think it's something telepathic or something we just don't understand, but man, it's, it's profound. I've fallen victim to it a few times, but that one was the strongest one for sure that I've experienced. I mean, we, we can't say, cause we're not, we're not sure about all this. We can't say it was absolutely Bigfoot. What you can say is Bigfoot was around the camp and, and things then these, got, then these and weird then things, things got weird. Things got yeah. weird. I don't know. And, and it happens. I mean, when these weird things happen, they're around. That's the only thing I can say for sure. Um, but if it's, if, like it's the not, if, if it's not them, what is it? You know, you know, I like know. the orbs. I never, I, I never really thought about the yeah. orbs until I started seeing them. And like at that location and that whole range, that whole area up there, the orbs that everybody talks about, I've bet I, I've probably seen them up there at least fifteen or twenty times. Yeah. And we're not talking like yeah. just floating balls of light. Some of them are huge. Some of them are the size of softballs. They're red. They're white. They're blue. Um, I've seen some yellow ones. But sometimes you see them and, and they're like in the middle of the night and you're walking and they're laying like in the trail. Mm. And they intelligently roll away from you. Mm. And I every time I do a safety briefing for people up there on our trips, I'm like, you see, I don't know what these are. Keep your space. Maybe they don't want to be touched, but they will yeah. interact. Like you walk forward, they'll roll back. You walk backwards, they'll chase you. And they keep that space. This is an intelligent thing. Sometimes they're floating. Sometimes they're rolling. Interesting. Sometimes they're in the trees. Sometimes they're down the ridge. I mean, and, and you'll see that up there. And it's just, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely there. And and what do you call it? I mean, we call it zapped I was sizzled. I was whatever. It was just names we're trying to give to this weird phenomenon that happened. Yeah. And it's, and I tell people like the first time that it happened to me, I felt like I was in a Mason jar, like a pressurized jar. Um, because that one lasted, I think maybe three days, but that one with Lou, that one lasted a good week to 10 days. So I got more of a description. It's more like wearing a wetsuit. <laughs> like you feel the pressure on you. Wow. Yeah. Especially, and, and it does dissipate over time, but the first few days, especially when it's that intense, and I, I, I think my dog was affected at least three days. Did, did you guys get, I've, I've often heard of 
intense headaches accompany accompanying this phenomenon. Did that happen to either of you? Not on that one. Um, okay. I, I can say um, when the one peed on me, um, which was way back in the beginning, um, that one, uh, when that was the first mason jar thing, they were chirping and whistling. Mm. And when they chirp, they have this high-pitched chirp. I swear to God, it makes your head ring. It's just like a gunshot going off next to your ear. And it's like, bee, bee. And it's, it, it's a chirp that you'll never forget. And I've, I've heard that <laughs> numerous times. Well, this, this comment is, is actually true. Um, and the Bigfoot community is divided on many, not just this, is divided on many topics. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'll be the first to acknowledge that that happens. Now, trying to convince each other really isn't worth it, and nor is it even important because none of us are experts. We can act like we are, but you know, who can explain these events? I mean, it's really, the, so, the more, the more you get into it, the weirder it gets in many ways. So, so the dead end collected guy just, just had, what do we do? I, I don't know if you got yeah. some question. So what do we do? Um, I've been at this for quite a long time. The only thing we can do is report and openly talk to each other about these experiences. Some things uh, are anomalous. You know, people always ask me, well, what about when they, when they go invisible and all this stuff? I've never seen that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I have not seen that. I've been zapped. I've seen the orbs. I've been touched. I know the language. I know their behaviors. I know what they like. But I'm not going to argue with anyone who says that I saw this thing go invisible or just go poof and the, and the track stop. Right. You know? And I'm a really good tracker. People know that. That's kind of my thing. Most of the time, especially with Sasquatch, I know how they think, and they have a really hard time getting away from me. Now, my first tracks that I ever found were in the snow. That's how I got into this. I was hunting turkeys, very innocently. <laughs> you know, and here I am. And I understand. They go through the snow, and you see their tracks. But when people see their tracks disappear, you, you're, you're talking about an animal that on their normal stride is nine feet. Imagine what they do if they decide to hop and jump into a tree. What is that? 20, 30 feet, maybe more. Depending yeah, on if, how if that's where they go. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But the, and, and so then the question is, you know, is, is it the magic of the Sasquatch having some special skill or is that the lack of the tracking ability of the witness? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Um, and so I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't pick on anybody and I don't discount anybody's stuff because I've seen so much weird crap. If, if you'd have told me that I would see a, a three, 400 intelligent lights around loose tent hovering and interacting with each other, I'd tell you, you were smoking crack, but it did. It happened. What does and, that mean? I don't know. We've a been with thing. a lot of people, Jason, who, uh, who have, different ideas to you and you and I and Lou, we don't agree on everything, but I've never heard you say, no, that doesn't happen. Or no, that can't be yeah, that way. I won't. Who knows? I mean, I've seen too just... much weird crap, man. Too yeah. much weird crap. No. Yeah. No, if you say it's there, then let's look for it. Let's find the proof. And if look... not, let's see if we can recreate it, can they do it again? You know? And so what do we do? We have to, we have to actually, um, you know, talk to each other in an open manner and try to figure it out and yeah. trying to poo poo things and just trying to look at pictures is not enough. You got to get in the field. You got to see it for yourself. Exactly. And, and for a lot of people, that's not possible because of physical limitations. Or oh, whatever. sure. And that's but why if you can YouTube get out, those guys. yeah, if you can yeah. get out and, you know, come, come on one of our trips in the summer, um, if, if you know Jason or Lou, um, see if it's possible to join them, uh, on one of their trips or our trips. But, um, Lou, let me just ask you this. This is something that came to my mind as you were sharing your story. You may not have an answer. You probably won't, but what happened? Where do you think you went during that 15 minute 
<laughs> time delay event. I, I have no idea. You know, may, maybe I, you know, um, I have this vision of me just frozen there, you know, contemplating the, you know, this shifting reality that's, that's taking place, you know, right in front of me. Right. 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 So I, I don't know if I just, if I just checked out for a little bit, you know, and, and, you know, my mind went elsewhere, you know, to, to, pr to protect my psyche. I, I, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's a little disconcerting more than a little, oh, actually more, more than a little. Yeah. As more to what, what happened during those minutes. So yep. um, now what the, the funny thing is like with me, especially with that group, well, there's a couple of them. I mean, you know, if the place we're going to go here in a couple of weeks, which the, I'm sure your viewers don't know, we're going to be doing that. Hopefully if the weather <laughs> allows, yeah. Um, you know, I think we're making some big inroads there. Um, they're shy, but we've been there. With, this is our, what, our sixth year going up there? Fifth or sixth, and something's yeah. happened every year. It has, and it, some of it's very profound. Um, and, but they're shy, I think, during the summer. Um, but the thing is, and, and it, it always makes me nervous when I, when I meet a new group of them, because I, I don't ever know how they're going to behave and what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's yeah. always dangerous. I mean, it's extremely dangerous. Um, but at the same time, I fully trust all of them because they could have hurt us at any time. And I, I mean, I've got, I'd have to sit down and actually think about all the different locations I've had encounters. And, yeah. and Jim, you and I have talked about this, that first time when we went where we're going in a couple of weeks, that first time we went up there, we, me, you and I were literally there just not even a day, not even 24 hours before they probed us. And I mean, they were, <laughs> they, yeah, they did. They probed us with a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know what I mean? Is um, they didn't, they were not hesitant. It was they were highly familiar with us, and um, and that and that really got me thinking. And I'm still wondering, do they have like some kind of group mind speak, and they mm -hmm. they have like a checklist of people that they like, and they're like, hey, these guys won't hurt you. We've had numerous things; they've already been checked out. And then maybe that's why they walked up to your tent and you filmed them with a thermal and all that stuff. And then loose on the next day, you know, maybe they know who is friendly and who isn't. Um, yeah. I, I think about that a lot. And then like, you know, with that stuff with the BAW last year, it blows my mind that that happens so close to your museum. Yeah. I mean, so close. Less, less half a mile away, maybe. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That blows my mind. I mean, I, I understand that they dig through dumpsters and stuff, but to have it that close. I mean, you, you drug me there, what, five years, I think, about five years. I think we've done that now. Mm -hmm. And every time you brought me there, because I'm used to stuff that's a little bit more remote than that, where you don't have to, like, listen to the trucks and the semis drive by your tent. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why do we keep doing this? this is yeah, yeah. And then last year, I'm like, holy crap, he's right. <laughs> Well, and it's, now it's, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that place for sure. You know, um, this question, the connection to Auburn is that I'm an Auburn grad. That's it. Um, and because I'm the host, I'm going to wear my hat. Uh, there you go. But that's, that's the only reason. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a phenomenon that thankfully it doesn't happen every time we go out. And in fact, it's pretty, rare that this happens especially to the level it happened to you guys um and i'm sure you don't look forward to that happening again i wonder if we get more resistant i don't know uh, we'll see. i really i really don't want to find out no, I, I, no. My, my my like even even days and days later right my my description of it was that i really felt like i had been you know violated mentally mm -hmm. right because this interesting this, some I, I think the way i described it to jason was it felt like somebody had reached into my brain and was oh. was looking for something right yep. and and it and it scrambled everything in there while it was looking for whatever it was looking for for and, those for those minutes yeah yeah and well, and so it, it it was not a was not a good feeling it it, it was yeah yeah it oh was, yeah yeah you know, like I tell people a lot of times about my wife's first undeniable encounter, which is very similar, different location. I'll just abbreviate it. But hey, Jason, had... real, just real quick to interrupt you. Your your screen got really dark all of a sudden. I'm no, sure I don't why. have a light on. I'll, I'll turn oh. the light on for you. Just so we can see you. Yeah. 
your your gorgeous face here okay. while you're talking. If I can find that. Oh. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sun's going down. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, just in a really short, abbreviated version of this, and this is before Lou had his encounter. But uh, at another location, the one where the one peed on me, they get really, really in your face. I've had some pretty profound encounters there. And um, anyway, long story short, we go out there with a bunch of people, and we were walk. We, I, I was going up there with the intention of poking the bear because my wife didn't think they were real, and it caused some stress. <laughs> and, poking uh, the bear. There you go. We go up there and we sat on a log. Uh, in the dark and our camp was about 300 yards away and I knew intentionally we were sitting in a place that I knew that they didn't like human beings being there. Sorry, my cat's screaming. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, we get off the log and uh, to my right, there was a stand of trees and the lake was maybe 25 feet away. Uh, it was pitch black and um, I'm on the right. My wife's in the middle. My buddy Chad is to the left. And my friends Dave and Carla are in front of us, maybe 50 feet. And we're all walking back down the road, back to the tent. And, I, and my intention wasn't to have an encounter there. My intention was to kind of get their, their notice up so they would follow us back to camp. And this thing was maybe 15 feet, 20 feet to my right. And he just like, he let, it, he let loose with this vocalization that was just unreal. And it was it was like standing next to a freight train, and it sounds like uh, what Ron Moore uh, Ron uh, Moorhead's recording that rucka 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 rucka, and it was like that, and it was so loud I could feel the organs in my body like moving, and it was it was and it was huge, and it was right there. My wife collapsed, and then she got up and she tried to run, and I was hanging on to her hand, and I didn't want her to to run, so I'm trying to calm her down, and we're just and I'm just just walk just walk, just walk, you know, and uh, don't, don't make him mad. Just keep walking. And so we walked all the way back to camp and uh, my wife started throwing stuff in the truck. She thought we were all going to die. <laughs> and she was, I mean, she wasn't even packing it up. She's just throwing it in the back of the car. Wow. And I was like unpacking it. And uh, she's a very level headed lady. And uh, she yes, was, she, she, she was terrified. I've never seen her that scared. And, um, my buddy Chad was like, what? And I'm like arguing with her. I'm like, she's like, we're, we're going to die. We got to leave. And I'm like, no, we're staying. And Lou knows how that goes. I don't leave, man. And, <laughs> <clears throat> and we were like toughing it out. And, and, uh, and she, her hands were shaking and Chad was mm -hmm. like, what's your problem? She goes, you didn't hear that. And he was, he goes, uh, and Lou knows Chad, Chad lived right down the street from Lou. But, um, yeah, he goes, uh, she goes, he goes, here, what? She goes, I swear to God, you say that again, I'm going to break your nose, Chad. We're all going to die out here. And, <laughs> and and he and so my wife and I were the only ones that heard this. And as loud as that thing was, as loud as it was, everybody should have heard that. And how close were they to you when this happened? 15 feet. Oh, gosh. And they heard nothing. They heard nothing. It was wow. like standing literally that's like if you're bizarre. standing on the railroad tracks and a freight train comes up to that's you and bizarre. blows its horn, that's how loud it was. And they heard nothing. Wow. So there's a lot of telepathy, some unknown thing there. And then we had a lot of other things happen that night and that whole weekend after yeah. that, of course. But th so it makes me wonder about a lot of this stuff. Like Lou was saying, they, you know, he was that, hanging onto that tree and he gets this, what you doing here? You know, and, they, and and I think he was being really nice to Lou. So, yeah, <laughs> at least it was well, like, rah! You know? we, we got a couple of good questions here. Let's see what you guys answer this. Do you use electromagnetic frequency meters? I have not. Um, I have not done that. That's another piece of tech that I like to get. Um, I've been trying for years to get a really good thermal imager, and that's, that hurts enough. Yeah. I've used an EMF, but I haven't, I haven't had it spike. Uh, yet but at, at the same time when i've used it i didn't believe anything was near us i was just kind of checking mm -hmm. if i knew something was near me i'm very curious what that would show mm -hmm. um here's a another question for you guys do y'all feel skinwalker ranch and specifically their claim that a bigfoot climbed out of a portal which opened up has derailed this in any way I'm not sure what you mean by derailed this but 
Um, I think there's a lot of weird stuff on that ranch. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? You know, the portal thing, I think maybe that's why Bigfoots don't like people in certain places, like where, where Lou's encounter happened. I know of a specific spot up there where those squatches don't like you going there and they will get nasty. And even with me and I have a really good relationship with them, but hmm. yeah. Any thoughts, Lou? I, uh, you know, I've seen all the Skinwalker Ranch stuff and that place is definitely uh, super Ooh. weird, but <laughs> yeah, is. you know, get, get, given my, my experience, you know, um, mm. you know, kind of like what Jason was saying, if, if somebody says they're coming in and out of portals, you know what? I, I, I can't say anything. Yeah. I no can't, comment. I, I'm no, no, yes or no, no, no I'm comment. It, I can neither that. confirm nor deny. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I have not seen anything portal related, but yep. after but, what, but you know, I people who have, so. after what I experienced and the way that we felt and, and what we saw on video, mm. it's like, I'm not, I'm not here to no. take anything away from anybody. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, and, and I think if, if we kept that attitude of, I don't, someone says something that I've never experienced and I could say, you know, I just don't think that happens. If we could just, you know, I wish this was the case politically in our country as well, but just say, I don't understand what you're talking about. I've never had that happen, but I respect you yeah. as a person and, yeah. Um, I wasn't there. I wasn't in your shoes. So I can't say that it happened or it didn't happen. Yeah. So, and the same thing, like with, so, you know, that's where the physical evidence comes in. Like all the tracks that I cast, man, I yeah. have a huge collection of those, you know, and it's just, um, yeah. It, and so that's something physical you can grasp onto, you know? And, and so like going back to that great cast that we got last year at the BAW that I'm waiting on, so the, the little boy that found that track, it wasn't him and his mom and, and him that had the encounter. Hmm. It was the campers from the previous night. They're in that spot that had the encounter and they didn't even know it happened. Yeah. So think about that. It was not them. It was the people that were there the night before that had the encounter because they were just setting their tent up when they found the track. And I had talked to the people before they left, they were from Nashville. I wish I'd have got their name because I would love to ask them some questions. Yeah, they had nothing to do with our camp at all. They, no, they were just there for a wedding. Yeah. So, yeah. And and the track was found by a 10-year-old boy. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Named Luke. Yep. <laughs> right. Right. I mean. It's an amazing track. It's, 50 it's feet from where we were camped. Something like it was, that. It was probably 15 feet from my tent. That's why he yeah, came over to Yeah. Me. Actually, your tent was close. I was. I was putting my tent up and he came up and approached me. He was, is this what we're looking for? And I'm like, after all these years, it's usually like, no, 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 no. Oh my God. Where is this? <laughs> he did a great job. He did. He, his family's awesome. And they're going to be coming back. I, they, I talked to them today. So they're going to be seeing us again. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the idea of a portal and something climbing out of a portal sounds ridiculous it sounds like you guys are smoking too much weed but the fact is i if i saw it it'd be one thing but i so much stuff i've experienced is weird unexplainable high strangeness if if somebody says they watch something climb out of a portal yep. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deny that i mean it's yep. just when i first started this way back when i thought we were just dealing with some kind of advanced ape yeah, me too. Way beyond that. It is so far way beyond that. Me too. But I think we can learn a lot from them and, and they seek us out. Yeah. You know, as long as you're not going to hurt them and as long as we can get over our fear, I think that they want to teach us a lot of stuff. And who knows, maybe these weird things they can do. Maybe human beings are actually better at it than they are. And we just forgot how. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there's there's been a couple of comments here that I didn't throw up because we have we have uh, limited time, but a couple of comments about Dave Pilates changing his perspective or at least talking more about Bigfoot. Uh, Dave has changed his perspective over the years. I mean, I think we all have. So um, he's been more open to talking about these things. Certainly more open to talking about Bigfoot, which I'm glad for because um, I respect Dave's 
thoughts and opinions on things. So um, we, we have all been out. Well, many of us have been out there. We've had encounters. We cannot explain. Um, people ask often, are they dangerous? Yes, they're dangerous. They, they can be. It's their you joy. have to respect them yep. and the, and respect what they could do. And so um, I have a guest in, a, in two or three weeks that, that's got a very compelling story of <laughs> very frightening encounters. So I listen to all that. I try to take it in, mix, put it into the mix of what I know and what other people have told me and just say, Okay, you know, um, I think we... like any other animal or any even even a person, you're yeah. talking about a being that's a highly intelligent and incredibly strong and huge beyond your belief. When I tell people how big the one the biggest ones I've seen, you're talking 12 feet tall, six, seven feet wide, a couple yeah. thousand pounds. I mean, they're enormous and your brain can't even wrap around what you're looking at. Yeah. Because yeah. you're like, that is way too big to exist in this world. And and yet, we still have a lot of people that go out in the woods and they camp and they have encounters and not so much as a scratch. And like with me, sure. oh man, I've had, I've had rocks zing past my head. Some of them the size of cannonballs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had them push over trees. I mean, I've had them, I've had them actively twist trees over my motorcycle. Um, I had and, them lift my friend Ron's pickup up while he was sleeping in the back and left his genital marks on the back of the camper shell. Um, I mean, all this stuff, I, it, it might, these things happen all the time and they've never once injured me. Now, yeah, there were a few times where I thought, man, I ain't going to get out of here alive. Yeah. I mean, I have pulled my gun on them a few times, but to be fair, um, the first one, well, that was totally legit. The second one was just because I hadn't really, I encountered a baby and I didn't know what was going to go with that. Yeah. And the third time was because he was testing me. He wanted to make sure I was going to shoot somebody smaller and he wanted me to shoot him. And that's how smart they were. They are that smart. And he was, he tested me. That's in my book. And that was an amazing three days. I think about it almost every day, probably yeah. well forever, yeah. but they're not, I mean, they have the capability like a bear or anything else, or even a human being, they can be dangerous, but as long as you stay sure. within your boundaries and as long as you behave, they'll leave, they, they will interact with you and your heart will beat out of your chest and you <laughs> may get zapped and may poop your pants and then your day goes on. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's pretty much the story. Yeah. Well, what I appreciate with you guys is, one, we've we've been through a lot of things together, yeah, and yeah. Uh, that really adds to your friendship and your trust in each other. That when you're out there and scary things happen, that's why I don't typically camp alone. I've done it a couple of times, but and it's funny, I'll go hunting alone. Somehow that feels different than doing what we're talking about. Oh, I don't know. I'm paranoid, man. I climb a tree like a monkey. <laughs> I don't like well, my back. I'm not back. saying it will never happen. No, I'm like not saying it will never happen. But no, I, I when I go hunting, I mentioned this a few programs back. Uh, out this last season I was hunting, it was really cold, like six degrees. And I get out there and I, I'm going in on an area I've never been in and I'm and I'm hiking through and and I get settled and I'm overlooking this meadow and by myself. There's nobody else around, no vehicles. I was totally alone. And just as it gets light across the way is a stand of uh, evergreens. And I hear this whack against a tree. <laughs> and I just kind of look over there and I say, I said out loud, okay, I know you're there. That's cool. You know, I'm here. Let's just do our own thing. And, and nothing else happened. So it's just crazy, crazy things they do. But uh but I appreciate you guys, appreciate you being on this evening and sharing something that you hadn't shared before and trusting us with that information. That means a lot. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that. we can be here. I, I love you guys. You're awesome. Well, I appreciate that. So much love, fun. Love you guys, too, and look forward to future adventures that we're going to have. Right on. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Good night, Jim. Thank you. Good, good night. So one quick 
housekeeping thing that I, I forgot to mention earlier. If any of you are interested in coming to Bigfoot Days at Estes Park on 20th of April, uh, we're going to have our, our big booth like we usually do. And um, Estes Park has asked me if I would do a podcast from there. So I'll be doing that uh, in the morning at 1015 in the, uh, I think it's the city council room in the building next to where the fair is. And I'll be interviewing um, two of the guys from Expedition Bigfoot, either one, one of them or both of them. I'm not sure yet. we got to figure all that out. But uh, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to interviewing them and finding out more about their experiences with Expedition Bigfoot. And it'll just be it'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to take questions from the audience who are in the room when I do that podcast. So it's a great chance to come and hear these guys and ask them whatever questions you want to ask. So this concludes our our uh, incredible program for this evening. I appreciate everyone. I love you guys and uh, look forward to when we can get together again next Tuesday night. Thank you for being here.